If you have a 2002 to 2014 Volvo XC90 and you want to upgrade your radio to have something that can run Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, this is the video for you. In this video, I'll be walking you through the installation and also showing you how you can run the USB cable into the center console through the grommet if you have the DVD player. I bought this radio directly from Seikane, but you can find a couple other companies that sell a very similar one that you could use this video to install as well. Let's take a look at what comes in the box. There's two different harnesses included in the kit. Both of them will connect to the radio here, but once I open up the car, I'll know if this is the connector I'll be using or this one. And you can see there's a slight difference. The gray one has like four larger pins on the outside while the green one has all the same pin sizes. So you can see this is the piggyback system. This probably goes to the radio. One side will go to the harness in the car, the other side will plug into the radio, and then this will pull the signal we need for the new head unit. Same thing here, and same thing right here. This is where the optical system connects. So on uh, this side that goes to the radio, probably have that going. This will probably, it looks like this pulls power signal. And then this here on both harnesses, there's a white connector that fits the canvas decoder. And this will tell the, the new head unit when doors are open, when the headlights are on, when the car is in reverse. There's two USB plugs. We'll plug in here. We've got our antenna adapter that goes on this side. This one will probably plug into the OE one so that this can take over FM functions. This is a camera connector, I think. And we have a bigger harness with inputs and outputs, which we will also look at. I think this is more useful if you are using potentially an external amplifier. I mean, the main harnesses are this and this, and we'll figure out which one we need. And the last piece is the screen, which is the brains of the operation. One last time before I replace it completely, I'm going to show you the uh, GPS system. So I'm going to turn the ignition on. Now on cars that were optioned with the GPS unit, it's actually, the system is under the driver's seat. But on the steering wheel, you get a back button, an enter button, and a little D-pad. So to turn it on, you press the enter button. There we go, the back button. Comes on, we've got a little message. You can actually hear the, uh, the disk system boot spool up under the, under the driver's seat. It's pretty cool. You hit back, navigate to shut down. settings, set destination, but it shut down. And it looks away. And it actually has an IR receiver right here because if I can find it real quick, not only do you have controls behind the steering wheel, you have a whole remote control so that your passenger can take care of this while you're driving. This is a really neat system for uh, especially for 2006 when GPS systems built in were quite new. So. But what we're moving to is going to have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, Android Auto for me, and it's going to be great. So yep. Let's uh, get started. We're going to have to remove this. And then we're going to have to pop 
this whole system out. So, let's get to it. And just before I get started, I'll take this out. It's my uh, Bluetooth FM transmitter because I will no longer be needing this. Okay, so first step I'm going to do is removing the screen. So here I'm actually making a mistake and removing just the mesh, but you want to remove the whole piece as one. I was able to put them back together even though I wasn't reusing it, but yeah, just be aware of that. Okay, good as new. <laughs> you you want to bridge it from the sides, but you also want to be careful because if you use your, your trim tool, it will squish this, which is a little soft, and you don't want to have too many creases, so be careful with that. If you have a car without nav, you're gonna have a probably a bigger speaker. It's gonna live under here and it's gonna be a mesh drill as well. It's the same process. With that done, there are three, four, five screws. Here are your five screws. One, two, three, four, five. Looks like T25. Now we wanna keep these safe because we are reusing them to mount the new piece that's gonna be on here. You're probably gonna want a shorter screwdriver because this one is not gonna fit in here. Okay. So, our whole module is here, we have Two connectors, three connectors, so we're gonna remove these. This is a push, so push this connector, pull it out. Okay, the blue one, same thing. This gray one. Okay, pull to the side. Okay, and that is our navigation screen module and speaker removed. Okay, now. Next step is working down here. If you remember from the video where I did the shift claw, I removed this already. Now, a common issue, common issue on these cars is that the latch fails in the cup holder. So, you know, if that happens, if you see a car with that, it's pretty common. Uh, one of the clips is damaged on this panel for me, but just be careful when you remove it. So use your trim tool, get in from the side, and you want to pop it up. Right from the back, lift, and to move this out of the way, we're actually going to have to turn the ignition on, put this in drive. This will allow us to pull it back. I should allow us to pull it back. There we go. Now I'd recommend not removing the uh, the boot because it's quite difficult to uh, access. So um, next, to remove this module or pull it out at least. We're going for the two bottom screws. There's four screws, as you can see in here. There's four screws and we're removing the bottom two. The top two stay on, the bottom two are getting removed. Screwdriver, this is also T25. In fact, they are the same screws as the ones used to hold in the top panel. pull up on the bottom here, up and down, pull the bottom up or towards you and then slide everything down and that should let this come out of the way. Okay, yeah, pull it back and we can tip this forward to see all the connectors on the back. Now, let's take a look. We don't want to unplug anything right now because we don't want to trigger any complaints. 
in the car. But we have this is an optical connector. This is one of the harness connectors. And then down here is HVAC back here, which we are not touching, I don't think. No. So we have Okay, there's another optical connector right here. I think this is the one we're piggybacking into. And then it might be another this connector back here might be something we're looking at, but I think it's mostly going to be these that we will be dealing with. Let's see about putting the car back into park so that I can take the key out. Okay. There we go. We can actually prop this over here for now. Come on, park. Take the key out. These are the connectors we have. Again, down here there is another. There's also one all the way at the bottom. So make sure this doesn't fall out. <laughs> and then we will be running up some wires to here, which is how we'll connect everything to the, the new screen. Based on what I've been able to see so far, this harness with the gray connectors does not have the optical piggyback, which this one with the dark green connectors does. So that would be this piece here, so these two. So what this is going to do, I believe, is piggyback through this connector. So this here. The, there's an optical connector within this that will separate, and we will run that into this new connector, and this one will plug into the old connector, I think. So, the reason I'm not going to be touching this one is because it's actually a different connector, even though it has optical loop. Uh, this green connector up here, I'll we'll plug into this, and this side will go into the head unit, the original head unit. This will go to the CAN bus decoder. This will go to the radio. And this goes somewhere else, and I have to figure out where that is because it is not in this space. However, this long, long, long harness tells me it goes somewhere else and I have to figure out where that is. So to make some room, now that I've figured out where this connector goes, which I'll show you in just a moment, I'm going to disconnect all of this so that I can have a little more space to work in here. On this optical connector there's a tab on the side. Down here, same thing as a little push tab. There we go. Tip this forward, and there is a 12 volt down here. Okay, and that just slides off. This is the radio removed. Now we can keep working. Now, with this. What this harness actually connects to is the amplifier. So what we're going to do is run this down to the amp, which is under the passenger seat. So right here we have the heat sink for the amp. And that is held in place with three bolts. We got two on the front. These are 10 millimeters. And then there's one a little further back, which I'll show you when I pull this out. So. This, if you pry it up, grab it, lift, pull out. And this is where the third one is. So, now, inside here, there's a bunch of connectors. This is fiber optics, we're not touching that. This is power, we're not touching that. 
Not sure exactly what this is, but we're not touching it either. It's a different connector. And the one on the end here. It's this connector here. Which matches our green plugs here. So what we're going to do is plug that one into this connector and plug this connector into the amp. Now, to run this this harness, this part of the harness down, we're going to try to follow essentially where this harness connects. So that's going to go down, and then it goes in underneath, and up in here. So to maybe have some access to that, I'm going to pop this off. this panel out with that out of the way you can see there's a bunch of harnesses in here and we're going to try to find where this one where this one goes so reach in here I can feel that it pushes this here and it's actually we can see it's this harness on the bottom there so we're gonna wanna, what we're gonna wanna do is take our harness that we're using, and we're gonna feed this part down back here around what's currently in here. Try to locate where this goes, so in the front right there, we can see it in here now. Pull that through a bit more. This is just to get some length in. It's not our final destination. And we're going to look down here. Probably gonna run it through like this so that it's a little thinner. This feeds down back here. So I have both in my hand right now. So you're gonna have to push against the foam that lines this, squeeze it by. And it's here. Here we go. I'm gonna need more through. Yeah, well, not that much. I don't need that much more. Now, let's connect these up. Female to the original one that went to the end, and then the new nail plug right in here. Let's snap it in now. So I'm gonna tuck these wires down here and just drop this amp back in place. Plug everything up top, we can test it. Okay, I'll leave the screws out so I can check on it if I need to. Now that I'm done running the wiring through, I'm going to put this panel back on. You want to make sure that this carpet is behind the part of the center console so that this panel will line up that back in, put that back on, there we go. Before I bring the radio back in, I'm going to connect the piggyback wires, so that's going to be this top harness here, this is right here, it's going into the new harness, this will go to the radio. 
This one we're not touching. But this here, now we're going to remove these two orange wires. I'm going to push on this little tab here. Pop that out. It separates. You pull on this little tab here. I'll let it come out. And right here, it will go into this connector. This has a slot for it. So we'll only fit one way. Click in. Got that. Oh yeah. And this piece connects into here. So this allows the fiber optics to stay connected to the amplifier, but also piggybacks on these four wires, of two or three wires, brown and two purples, which will now come to the radio. And this connector. While we're here, I'm also going to connect the CANBUS decoder, which snaps onto the thing harness. And I'm going to try to run this excess wire that goes to the amp down into the center console. Free up some space. So this bundle here, which is the connector to the radio, this wire, which comes from the CANBUS decoder, these two audio jacks, and the CANBUS decoder itself will come up through the center, right here. And this is what's going to connect to the to the screen. Now. I've got a little tangle of wires here that I want to address real quick. There we go. It goes here. This is for the HVAC and 12 volt. And then we have these two optical connectors. And so these are the three connectors that go to the radio, the top part. And this for the HVAC zone. I'm going to have this hang up out here. I'm going to get the radio and reconnect it and test it. Okay. So once again, put the key in, get the car in drive, get this up and out of the way. Actually, I'm gonna put this here and some stuff. Oh, right. Shit. No. I just realized now I have an airbag light. Because I removed this whole thing, so. Fortunately, I am able to reset this, but it's good to remember. You turn the ignition off when you're in. Well, yeah. You'll have to make sure you don't turn on the car with the radio out, because that will trigger an airbag light. Reconnecting the HVAC controls with 12 volt. This. Optical connector first. This other optical connector second, which has to face the correct direction. And then this connector here. Now, with this plugged in, we're actually going to be able to plug this in and lay it up. 
let's see how things work. So again, the connector we're, con we're worried about, we're concerned with is this one. This is the connector we're connecting to the screen. Of course, this is not the final mounting system, but. There we go. Okay, let's see if we have any music here. I getting audio but not from everywhere. Let's see. So after turning on the head unit with just the minimum connections, I'm not getting audio out of the front left speaker. And it sounds like trying different things and I decided to look at the connections here. So this is where the audio wires come from the head unit because the head unit acts as the amplifier and bypasses this to feed directly into the speakers. However, I noticed that these two wires on the outside don't connect to anything here and the two white and white with a black stripe which correspond to front left line up with the black and red wire here which doesn't make sense. So I'm going to depin these two and move them over to the end and then test it again and see what happens. So it's the fourth from the right. Okay, pop that one into the top here. So I'm using a triangular point and it goes in one, two, three, four to the bottom part of the groove. Reconnect this. Have this propped up. And we use the included songs that are on board. Ta -da! There we go. And it all works now, finally, okay. Good. To assemble the housing of the screen, we're gonna put in the four screws that hold it together. So now that we have the housing assembled, we're gonna pull the cables through the opening at the bottom so that we can connect them to the panel. So we're gonna pull through two USB connectors pull through the backup camera harness. We're going to pull through the GPS module. And we also want to pull through the main radio harness connector. Later on, when we're wrapping everything up, we'll use some fabric tape to bundle everything together so it doesn't rattle. And something to note is that each connection has a unique shape, so you can only plug them into one spot so you won't get them mixed up. As I was saying, now that this is assembled, I'm going to run all the wires up through here. I almost lost this one. Oh, in fact, I almost forgot, but there is a... Uh... Okay. <laughs> so, where the CAN bus decoder 
plugs in, there's actually a little, little pigtail that comes out, and this will also go to the, the head unit. So I gotta make sure. Woo. Gotta make sure that fits up in here. The main connector also has to come up through here. Let me see, maybe I can. And you can see it. Right here. That is in. Now, with all that connected, <laughs> finally start pushing stuff back down through here. Maybe taking up a lot of space up top. This is pretty crowded in here. Let's just say. I'll have to decide if the canvas decoder will live in here or elsewhere. But let's start pushing this back in a little bit. This gives us an idea of what things will look like once everything is pushed up. So. There we go. As you can see, it's pretty clean. There's a little scuff here because on the edges there was flashing from the molding process, and when I went to cut it, Blade slipped, and scuffed this, but if you're careful, that won't happen. Now, it's pretty good. I mean, I can actually you know, reach the volume buttons. It's not too far. Next step, I'm going to be running a USB cable, which I don't know where I put it, but I'm going to run a USB cable into the center console storage compartment. That way I can plug my phone in and just leave it in there. When I'm driving and it's out of the way, I'll have Android Auto up here and yeah, it'll be nice, nice and clean. Okay, so unfortunately it looks like there is no microphone connection on this radio. So I'll probably have to test out this microphone and hopefully it's good enough. Fortunately, the microphone on this unit is actually pretty much at you know at your head level so it should work pretty well i usually prefer to have a microphone mounted either by the rear view mirror or in the corner pointed towards you but hopefully this is good enough because none of the harnesses that are included have the dedicated like microphone jack so that's something to consider too i'll let you know how it works once i get it all running and Maybe I'll do a little, and I'll do a little review video. Anyway, in the meantime, I'm gonna connect my camera cable. You only need to use this if you're running a backup camera, which I'll be showing the install in another video. Right here, I've got my USB to USB-C cable. If you're using, if you're planning on using a iPhone, you probably want to run either a iPhone cable or you could also choose to run just a USB extension to where you want. So there's a couple of options. You can probably run this to come out in the cup holder or otherwise I'm going to try to run it into the center console. Let's see. Yeah, I'd also figure out where to run backup camera wiring. And that is going to be in the footwell. So what we're going to do is we are going to pull the bundle of the camera wire out through here, or at least back here. So we're gonna pull the bundle back here and then we're gonna run it inside behind this panel. So I'm probably gonna have to pull this panel down to tuck it away, but the first step is going to be to pull it out through here and then just have it down here. I pull the panel off.
So what I did to start is pull it through here because there's a pretty easy access to reach in from up here. So I was able to pull this bundle out, which means I have all of this down here. And then what I'm going to do is run this in forward here to the back there. And then later, once I pull down the panel, I'll run it. Should be able to secure it in there. Maybe a zip tie or something. Right in here, and then the big bundle is going to run up inside this seal. So we'll get tucked in here. And then it'll run back to the trunk. So for the USB cable, since my goal is to run it this way, I'm going to, I think I'm gonna run it out in the same place as the backup camera cable and then run it alongside here for now because I can tuck it in there and access a good bit of stuff under here and that'll let me use it for now. This is a six foot cable which will eventually allow me to run into the center console. But right now, it's just gonna get tucked in right here. And if this is enough for you, you can actually just stop there and just have it alongside the your seat and plop your, your phone in your cup holder or wherever you like. Bring it in your pocket, I guess. So up here, I pushed the canvas decoder back here. That's out. And this bundle may get fabric tape wrapped just so it doesn't jangle. I've got my USB antenna here. I'll figure out if this is a good spot. If it is, it'll probably live under here. If not, we'll see. I'm gonna slot this in completely. This does screw in on the back. I should show you there's one, two, three, four, five screws on this one. And then there's four, the four original screws here that will come through there. And this actually gets capped off when you're done so that it looks nice and clean, a little tidier. But for now, this is good. I've got my USB cable, I've got my backup camera cable. So I think, I think the next step is going to be to put the radio back in here and then we can test it out. Now, this radio, this head unit did not come with uh, any soft, to my knowledge, didn't come with software that will let you run Android Auto or Apple CarPlay built in, but you can download software or an app. You can download an app like Head Unit Reloaded or Z-Link, which both work great. Um, instead of buying a dongle adapter. So some sometimes they'll say, oh, you can get an adapter and then plug your phone into there. But you can also just get software for Android that will do that native to the, to the screen. Key in the ignition, turn the ignition off, I guess. So we're gonna move the panel back. Once I know everything works, I'll actually snap everything back in. We're going to be removing or pulling this center console out. And to do that, there's actually a couple of methods. Uh, different cars, are going to, different FC90s are going to have different methods to remove this. On my car, it's a screw here and one on the other side, and then these covers come off. They latch the thing in, they latch it in. So again, on mine, there's T25 screw in here on either side and then these covers come off and then the whole unit will slide back. Since I have the rear seat media unit, there's a lot of stuff in here, so it's a little heavier. But my goal, what I'm hoping to achieve is by pulling this back is actually to be able to run the USB cable that goes to the head unit up and into the the space inside so so i'll be running the usb cable through this grommet that way i can put my phone in the center console 
So you have to move your seat forward and then you can access the screws better. The other side. Okay. Okay. I think these pop out. Yep, you can pull it out a little bit on either side. So you just pull that works. Slide it back. However, on this car, since it has the media, it is actually plugged in. This stuff. So if you look here, down here there's a bunch of cables. So, since I have the USB cable coming here, maybe I can run it inside to come out here. So there are more screws here, 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 and here. Maybe. If that allows me to drop this panel down and access this harness, which goes up into the, the lid, maybe I can run the USB cable through there. So removing these four screws will allow me to remove the cup holder. Oh, perfect. In here, there is the grommet right here. So if I can feed my USB cable through here and up into here and up into there it should be it should work now when we pulled this panel off we pulled this through here we pulled this through to get the backup camera cable through also I was able to feed the USB cable inside along here I'm just pushing it through I was able to reach in there grab it and pull that through. So it is now coming through that gap. So I'm gonna pull it through and go back to the rear. Okay, and it's in there. We wanna make sure it's out of the way. This is gonna be running inside the console. So now that our cable is here, we are going to want to kinda of run it alongside this harness here. This has to come in here. I'm gonna run it here. Push that in. Get that through. Right here, make sure that has some slack. And then in here. What I'm gonna try to do is tuck it back there behind or along the side here. Tuck it behind that just so it doesn't interfere with the cup holder. And I'll loop it around and then I'm gonna feed it through up there. Here I've looped it around that harness. And now I'm actually gonna bring this back down so I can reach in and push it through the, the grommet. Right here you can see I got it in through the hole. The grommet is out and now next step is I'm gonna try Try to feed it through the grommet so this can be resealed and look nice. So. There you go, that's through. Put this in there. Right here. It's now through the grommet, so I'm going to put the grommet down, back down, and try to set it back in. Now, as you can see, the USB cable comes out through the grommet that has the harness to the media unit and it's routed with no cutting. Now this probably won't work, this probably won't be an option on a car that doesn't have the media center but it, I think if we look in the bottom here you'll be able to see those four squares and there's two layers to this box essentially and you would probably be able to drill a hole through that down to the bottom but I also think that if you do go that route you have to keep in mind that on non-media 
non rear media cars. There's probably a panel that covers this area since this is completely separate. So you might have to get creative for that. We're gonna install everything in there. So I'm gonna put the cup holder in. My screws back in. connectors up front if you have them down and out of the way. Now let's just slide forward. Make sure this is in too. When you're aligned, push these in. Right here. And get your screws. And on both sides we're gonna fit them back in. And same thing on the other side. And then we want to plug in our phone. The cable's in here. And connect it. Drop it in. And there's actually room for big phones too. There you go. And so your phone will charge. And you can run Android Auto or Apple CarPlay from in here. You can also, if you want, run a USB extension that would go from behind the original radio that connects to the USB port cable on the back of the head unit. And if you run that into here, you can switch out your cable if you need to. So if you had someone who drives it with Android Auto, you can get your USB-C cable. Someone who drives with an iPhone and Apple CarPlay, you can switch for that. Or you can also alternatively run both USB-C and uh, iPhone lightning cable. And since you have two, two USB ports that come off of this, so just do it again with another. Uh, yeah. Not much left to do for the radio. We are going to have to put in the two screws that hold this unit in, and then put in the four screws that connect that and cap it off. And yeah, I did um, I did test the microphone that's built in since it's the only one we can use and it's actually pretty good. So I still have to test it with the car driving, but it looks like it's gonna be a good option. So now to wrap things up up front, we're gonna pull this off it up again, just so we can mount the uh, the main unit back in. There's two T25 screws at the bottom. Again. Go. Slip this back in, snap it down, back in park. That's done for this. One last thing to button up is this panel here. No. Last step down here is with the amp this up. We want to make sure everything is fitting well under here. We have our three screws. We can get started by hand. As these are started, we can get in there with the ratchet. Just until it's done. That's good. That's it. One of the last few steps is going to be to screw the screen to the housing. So to do that, I'm actually going to pop this out and then get the screws in. All right. Now we have. One, two, three, bam, four. Originally there were five on mine, but we're putting back the four that remain here. Okay. 
with that done, the last, the very final step is to put the caps in. Okay, so there's two that have a steeper side profile. These are going to be the fronts. Oh, there's a little groove. And on the back, there's also a little raised portion right here. Installed HUD unit reloaded and tweaked a couple settings, and now I have my all my apps with my phone connected in here. So let's open this up, put this in, and do everything I need on here. So yeah, very exciting. Now because I made the mistake of Turn the ignition on with the original unit here, which is the HVAC and the original radio disconnected. I have to reset my airbag light. So really make sure while you're doing this process that the ignition is off anytime this is disconnected so that you don't run into this issue. Fortunately, I have the ability to reset it myself, but if you're in a situation where it does trip the airbag light, you'll have to stop by a dealership or visit a friend who has the right tools. So, let's go into the SRS module if you have an Autel. Once your car's connected, let's check the trouble codes. And clear these codes. Okay. And back here. No messages. Perfect. Well, that's it. Not for me, that's done. That wraps it up. So that's the install completed. The steering wheel volume controls do work, which is really nice. So you don't have to reach over here. The microphone being here after testing it and driving works really well, so that's also a good plus. And with had you didn't reload it, which is what I use, or something like Z-Link, you can run Android Auto or Apple CarPlay without any dongles, which is really nice. If you want to see how I installed the backup camera for this car, hit that subscribe button. That's the next video I'll be posting. If you have any questions about the install, leave a comment. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. And if you want to see more about what I had to do after buying this car for $700, check out the playlist. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.